and good morning. Wow. 444. I've been up, I've been awake two hours already, and I've been up since three o'clock. <laughs> and I sat out in the atrium this morning. I went into the meditation room and I thought, no, I'm going to go in the atrium. And so I switched locations fairly soon after I, I got up. Interesting meditation this morning. And I actually ended up changing the title. And the, as I wrote the blurb, I was moved or I felt to to shift how I was going to do it, and I'll explain that after I read it. So the title is The Olympics Are in the Eye of the Storm. And the blurb I wrote, Today's the day some predict, predicted ET action and a deadline for the cabal that has been criminally ruling the world. They said something would happen at the Olympics when the eyes of the world are on London. So far, nothing spectacular has been seen from the human 3D perspective. And I seriously doubt we will see anything today that is all that earth shattering. <laughs> at least for a while, we are in the eye of the storm. I don't think that peaceful calm will continue for long perhaps days, weeks at the most. The old paradigm is being shaken by unseen powers that are very real. And while the threats still generate fear, it is the would-be rulers that have the most to fear. Their world of control by deception will be exposed for all to see. And there will be no place to hide as the big storm sweeps the planet clean. And it was interesting, After right after I wrote that blurb, I got a new friend on Facebook and just happens to live in Storm Lake, Iowa. <laughs> I kept that up on the screen because I thought that was pretty interesting. <laughs> uh, for me, I, as you know, I've been in a very relatively peaceful place, and that was how I began my meditation this morning, just reflecting on how much peace I felt. And yesterday, my mind was so calm <laughs> that I almost didn't know what to talk about, which I shared in yesterday's video. But around between five and six o'clock in the evening I went out and checked my mail and I got a letter from Judge Murphy <laughs> John C. Murphy he's the judge that I stood before on uh, whenever it was back uh, on the driving without a license charge who did not allow me to present my statement did not want me to ask questions did not like, uh, did not like it that I did not want either of his two options that he offered me, and so he offered me a third option of getting arrested, basically, and put in jail. And I've been filing a lot of paperwork from the beginning of that case because it was totally unconstitutional, totally wrong. Anyway, I got a one-page document and order from him, which is basically three sentences, and the rest is heading and signature and stuff like that. Deny all requests of defendant filed in case numbers, and he has the wrong case numbers. He has, he has, he mixed up the case numbers. They're not they're not as they actually are in the case. It's totally incorrect what he has on this paper. From the beginning of the files to present. In other words, everything you've ever filed with this court in this matter is irrelevant. We're denying it. Now, I never made a request. 
they were affidavits and things like that. Anyway, defendant is directed to no longer file anything but items directly related to the charges he is facing. <laughs> they were all related to the charges I was facing, all of them. Anyway, should any more of this common law citizen paperwork be filed, it will be considered a nullity. They've already tried to ignore everything I've ever filed with this 18th Judicial Circuit Court in Brevard County, Florida. Brevard and Seminole counties, actually. And so, what is he telling me that's different than the way they've already responded to pretty much everything that I've done? They don't like the fact that the law is against them. They cannot win a case based on actual law. He's calling it common law citizen paperwork. In other words, people standing up for their rights. And that's the most important thing people can do. But let's get back to the Olympics. That was where I was going to go when I started this. But as I was meditating and then as I came to the computer, I added the Olympics when I st started put putting down what I was going to talk about today. I added the Olympics because I'm getting the impression that the Olympics right now are in the eye of the storm. In fact, the whole earth is in the eye of the storm. But there's a, but there's a storm. It's, it's, it's there, it's brewing. If it was in the Atlantic Ocean or the Western, uh, I'm sorry, the Eastern, yes, the Eastern Pacific Ocean, it would be called a hurricane. If it was in the Western Pacific Ocean and by Australia, Antarctic, or Australia, New Zealand, Japan, South, Southeast Asia, it would be called a cyclone. And if it was in the Indian Ocean in India or uh, uh, I guess Western Australia or uh, Eastern Africa, uh, it would be called a typhoon because they have different names depending on the location on Earth where these storms are located. But they're basically big storms that move around an eye. And, it, and it's calm in the eye, but the storm is moving around that. So we all know what the eye of the hurricane means, the eye of the storm. That's what we're talking about. And things seem fairly calm on the surface right now. But we know that a storm has been brewing and there have been threats of the bankers being arrested and, and other members of the cabal being arrested and being brought to justice and since I got that letter yesterday I've been really crying out if you, as, you, as it were to God and saying look I'm your son and I didn't come here this time to be martyred I didn't come this time to be abused I've gone through that in past lives, you've shown me that, but not this time. This time I've come for justice. This time I've come for truth. This time I've come to help set people free, and myself included. So you're going to have to show me the gifts that are latent within me, and show me how to deal with these storms that come. And as the peace again in meditation settled over me. Despite the fact that I don't have all the answers, that I don't know exactly how things are going to work out, I have thoughts. Some of them are troubling thoughts, like they're trying to arrest me with no real grounds, but they, they would like to see me in jail like they'd like to steal my home. I, I know some of the dynamics that are taking place. And remember, this judge is a judge that I have filed a complaint against that law firm, against his law partner, before he became a judge. He should be reclused from the case. I mean, dismiss himself from the case because of prior connections with me, indirectly, but through his the law firm that he worked for. That's a conflict. 
and he needs to dismiss himself, but he's an arrogant man. And what part of me is the arrogant man that I have to deal with? These are questions that the, uh, that the uh, sorry to say psychic, but that's not what I mean. The mystic always takes it back home. What is this thing in the outer world saying to me about me? And I have to answer that question because I have to heal that part of me that is arrogant and, and demanding like this judge is doing. He's wanting to be the ego un, unbridled, but it's not going to happen, folks. And the fact that the Olympics are in London and the eyes of the world are on London right now is very significant because London is the center of the commercial world. It is absolutely the, the center of all international banking and it's the center as I said, of the commercial world. The whole world's economy and the whole world's business is basically controlled from London. That's the eye of the storm. And that's where the world's focus is right now. And it seems peaceful. But there is so much going on. And and do I know everything that's going on? No, I don't. I have the sense. I just have the sense that things are being swept up in the periphery that will burst on the world scene and nobody's going to be able to deny it. How that's going to happen? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But that's not, I, I'm sensing that that's not far away. I'm not going to give a date. Anybody that gives dates to me is stupid. Even the crop circle makers that put that August 4th date there in the crop circle. All right, so August 4th. Is anything going to happen on August 4th? Yeah, lots of things are going to happen. Is it going to be anything earth-shattering or eye-opening or... or uh, something that will change the paradigm instantly? I don't think so. I'd like to see it happen. Oh, I'd love nothing better than to see our ETs show themselves in a more substantial way than has happened heretofore. I don't necessarily expect that that's going to happen. It could. It could. And I'd be, I'd be rejoicing. Now, somebody sent a really well thought out article. They wrote, and I, and I read it yesterday on if the ETs, if, if the ETs actually land, they're probably going to be dark ETs working with the cabal. And, and we shouldn't trust ETs that land and, and, and want to give us new technologies, which are really not new technologies at all. They're just suppressed technologies that have been here for a long time. But they want to give us free energy and and all of these other technologies to beware of them because that's the evil cabal. Well, the evil cabal is being exposed as never before in their history. Okay? These would be world dominators and the whole domination system they've been putting in place. I mean, I know. That letter from the judge is part of that domination system. You're going to do what we tell you, and we're going to tell you what the law is. You're not going to tell us what the law is. You see that happening all the time as they try to run over human rights. But it can't continue, folks. I'm telling you, it can't continue. There is some new dynamic that is at play that's bringing forth light shining into the darkness in a way that has not been experienced for a long time, certainly, on planet Earth. And in our known history, you have to go back to, to a previous golden age or something like that, or going into a golden age before anything like this happened before, if indeed that's true. I, for us, let's say this is a first first-time event. 
as the world shifts. And right now, as I said, we're in the eye of the storm. Right now, things seem pretty calm. And I've been in a pretty calm space. And even with the letter from yesterday, I still remain mostly calm. Not 100%, not as calm as I was yesterday morning, but still mostly calm. Because somehow I know the gifts that are in me and the gifts that are in you, the gifts that are given to the human family are being awakened. And that flame of freedom is burning ever more brightly and it will not be extinguished. And justice will prevail despite their attempts to deny justice as this Mr. Murphy is doing. So I leave you with these thoughts today. And I ask you once again, to go inside your own inner space and find that place where you know who you are. And I'm going to tell you who you are in case you forgot. You are a child of the living God, of the Creator Spirit that created you and created everything in the universe. And it was all created for good, not evil. And we've run the race, we've run the gamut, as it were, and we're at the end of this part of our experience of living in the pig pen. And we're coming to ourselves and we're returning home to the Creator that made us. And this is a beautiful thing. That's who you are. You are a child of God, every one of you. And it has nothing to do with your religion. It has nothing to do with your belief system. It has to do with the fact of your creation that you were born a child of God. Namaste. Thank you.